Two scientists discovered that these molecules were stable enough to remain in the atmosphere until they were broken down by ultraviolet light, re releasing chlorine atoms. These chlorine atoms were expected to catalyze the breakdown of large amounts of ozone, which protects us from the sun's ultraviolet light. A decade later, scientists discovered that an ozone hole in the Arctic showed a decline in polar ozone far larger than anyone had anticipated. Just four years later, 20 nations, including most of the major CFC producers, established an agreement for controlling ozone-depleting substances. All countries in the United Nations have now ratified the Montreal Protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer. And a recent scientific evaluation concluded that the Montre Pro Montreal Protocol is working. There's clear evidence of a decrease in the atmospheric burden of ozone-depleting substances and some early signs of stratospheric ozone recovery. Moreover, a way was found to put rich and poor countries on the same footing. The multilateral fund for the implementation of the Montreal Protocol provided funds to help developing countries phase out the use of ozone-depleting substances. I find this example to be of great encouragement. We can do what is needed. One would think that getting the science right educating the public, and defining and implementing effective policy would solve the world's problems. However, I think there's a bigger issue at stake. When it is necessary, as in the Montreal Protocol, to eliminate something worldwide, everyone is necessarily treated the same. But much of modern economic society is built on inequity. It is acceptable for some people to acquire an income thousands of times greater than others, and through their consumption of the Earth's resources to use, on a per capita basis, thousands more of the Earth's unreplenishable resources. Consider the difference between people who fly around in private jets pumping huge amounts of carbon dioxide into the air, compared with poor people who travel by foot or bicycle. The biggest challenge the world faces is a new morality, where we all agree that equity is right. Without equality, there can be no sustainability. We can see the importance of equality in the current debates over controlling carbon dioxide production. The wealthy nations would like everyone to reduce their carbon usage proportionately. The poorer nations reply, Wait a minute. You have had decades of profligate use of energy resources that allowed you to build a rich economy. We deserve the same opportunity to burn energy as you have done until we achieve an equal standard of living. The rich nations are trying to impose a morality of maintaining the status quo, whereas the poor nations are arguing for a morality of equity. I don't believe we will ever achieve sustainability unless we embrace the ethic of equality. A powerful desire to be treated equally is built into the human psyche. Science produces knowledge and technology implements that knowledge. Fortunately, knowledge is not a limited resource like water, food, and oil. Amrita's founder, Amma, has said that, and I quote, knowledge is the greatest gift we can give, for knowledge does not diminish no matter how much it is shared. In fact, the more you give, the more it develops and expands, unquote. Knowledge is going to be important in finding solutions to our environmental problems, but it is not enough. Neither science nor technology provides us with the values that are needed to make the right choices. I would like to use the term understanding 
to incorporate knowledge and values. Where does understanding come from? Again, I found something relevant within Amrita, this time from the engineering campus. Again, I quote, when we study in a college striving to become a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer, this is education for a living. On the other hand, education for life requires understanding the essential principles of spirituality. This means gaining a deeper understanding of the world, our minds, our emotions, and ourselves. For decades, I have been fascinated by two worldviews. I'm going to call them East and West, but these are historical references to their origins and not geographical distinctions of the present world. Western science is objective. The individual observer must be objective and removed from the system. The system must be simplified to the greatest extent possible. Measurements must be quantitative precise and reproducible. Western science has brought great understanding and technological progress. Chemistry has taught us, for example, that plants are often nitrogen limited, and chemical technology developed the Haber-Bosch method for creating abundant fertilizer that led to the Green Revolution and several decades of abundant food for the world's population. No small accomplishment. But Western science does not teach us about our minds, our emotions, and ourselves. Eastern science has a tradition of inner reflection, a focus on the subjective experience of the individual. This is where our minds, our emotions, and ourselves become clear. This is where we understand that the mind creates our objectives, our values, and our choices. The Dalai Lama has written, and again I quote, In essence, science and spirituality, though differing in their approaches, share the same end, which is the betterment of humanity. At its best, science is motivated by a quest for understanding to help lead us to greater flourishing and happiness. Continuing the quote, similarly, Spirituality is a human journey into our internal resources with the aim of understanding who we are in the deepest sense and of discovering how to live according to the highest possible idea. In addition to the objective world of matter, there exists the subjective world of feelings, emotions, thoughts, and the values and spiritual aspirations based upon them. If we treat this realm as though it had no role in our understanding of reality, we lose the richness of our own existence, and our understanding cannot be comprehensive." Unquote. Western science leads to knowledge. Eastern science leads to understanding. So we arrive at the point I promised at the outset, why you Amarita students are special. You have had both the Western and the Eastern traditions in your education. Amrita's mission statement says, quote, to provide value-based education and mold the character of the younger generation through a synthesis of science and spirituality, so that their earnest endeavor to achieve progress and prosperity in life is matched by an ardent desire to extend selfless service to the society, to the society one complementing the other. The world needs your leadership. It needs your mastery of science and technology, but more importantly, it needs your insights into human values. It is only through a deep appreciation of our obligation to one another that we will be able to achieve an equitable and sustainable world where all humans will live meaningful and fulfilling lives. Thank you for letting me share this very special day with you.